Okay, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to explore what the notes' behaviors are towards each other, their relationships towards each other. In the previous lectures, we have discussed how a note become a note, the frequency that is held by instruments at a specific frequency. That we can cognitively pick it up as a tone, so a sound has been transformed into a tone, into what we call musical notes. How do they become musical notes? That's when we actually label them. We give them names, just like、uh, when someone's born,、uh, you name the baby. When a note, when a frequency can be identified. And now, are born into a family of notes. We'll get to the family today. There is one particular family、uh, that we will learn today. They're called scales.、Um, it will need a name, so we name these pitches. And in the most scientific term, and this is a modern definition, the frequency that is four forty. Hertz, okay. That pitch is called a concert A. This is where most orchestras are tuned into that frequency,、um, and I can't get into the details how this came to be.、Uh, but in modern orchestra, you can pretty much expect even most of the instruments. You can pretty much expect that a concert A is defined as four hundred forty. Hertz as the frequency of the vibration. Okay, so this is a very quick review of how we got to here today. Today,、uh, we're going to learn how these notes are going to behave because they're now alive. They have a name, so they want to have friends and they have a family. And we're going to、uh, do a, another quick round of review of the value, the time signature, the clefs, and the,、um, and these、uh, technical things. And then、uh, we're going to dive straight into、uh, how these notes、um, are being perceived in a relationship, in a context of their families and their friends. All right, let's go to Sibelius. First thing first, you know how to do this. I don't have to say again. You create a new document, and what I'll do is I'm gonna make this nice and big for you.、Um, I'm gonna call this from sound to musical notes. And、uh, so the first thing、uh, we're gonna revisit is、uh, the note value. So the, here's my keypad, and as you can see, you can actually bring this all the way up here. Why not? <laughs> It's much closer.、Uh, so right here,、uh, first of all, we're gonna select the first bar, and what I'll do is I will select a quarter note, and I'm gonna fill this bar with the quarter note. This bar is so far not defined, and、uh, just go with me on this.、Uh, we're gonna put、uh, the concert A, just because we just talked about the concert A, which is four forty hertz. So as we can see, there are four quarter notes. Okay, four quarter notes in a measure in a bar. This. Gives us a four-four time signature. So type the letter T, and then we have all these time signatures. You can also just go to notation tab and go to time signature. Here we go. Here is a four-four. Ah, it's over there. Let's move it over here. So、um, don't forget to save these documents as you practice. Desktop. Here we go. And now、uh, we're looking at. A defined bar, okay, defined as note values. 
And we just talked about this is a concert A. Concert A is here on the staff. This is a five line staff. And as you can see, this is like a swimming pool, uh, you know, lanes and lines. And so each space, this is also a space, each line, I'm going to make it even bigger so you can see. Okay, in this lane, this is a space right here. And this is a line. We can even make a little shadow so you can see. This is a space. This is a line. This is a space. This is a line. This is a space. This is a line. So on and so forth. Did you see what just happened? <laughs> the computer does it automatically for you. But as uh, my generation grew up without computer and we had to learn all of this by hand, so in the middle line, this note in treble clef, it's a B. In bass clef, it's a D. In alto clef, it's a C, middle C. So um, this, you see the stem kind of flipped down. Yeah, so the stem, the line, the stick that holds the lollipop, the stem flips at the middle line. The options are you can have the stem up or down. The default is down. And as you move up into another space, that's line, that's a space, that's a line. It keeps going down. It points down. Another space. And now we're going to keep moving up. Okay. Then we get into the ledger lines. See, there is an added, an added line. Because we run out of five lines, so we're going to create temporary little posts of lines so that this note can keep going up if it wants to, and it does. So it keeps going up. That's the space. That's the next one. This is a B in treble clef, high B. This is one of the top notes of the human voice range. If you can hit that note, you can sing almost anything, okay? And then keep going, this, see, one more ledger line. Two lines are created. It, it still wants to go up. I'm just gonna follow this note. This note keeps going up, that's a D. That's a D that's in the space above, sitting on top, but it's still going, so it grabs another ledger line, another space, and it keeps going up, and this, another ledger line, as you can see, theoretically, <laughs> it's, it's like that cartoon character. You can just keep going, keep going, keep going, right? Here's a note. So what note is that? That's actually out of the piano range. So the top note on the piano, this note, is right here. That's a high C, right? And... Um, this is a high C right here. <laughs> and you can drag it down to the B right here. That's an A right here. So um, we got distracted a little bit. And uh, in this bar, which is defined in the treble clef, again, treble clef is a G clef, the letter G. This represents a freehand form of the letter G and where it is circling, this circle right here is a G. In other words, this note is a G and then this note is an A and this note is a C. It's the middle C, okay? And now we're gonna divide this note right here into a uh, subdivision in two, which means we're going to divide a quarter note into two eighth notes. So two eighth notes makes a quarter note, eighth note right here. Look at my cursor right here. Okay, the way I'm gonna do it, you're not required to learn this, but the way I'm gonna do it is I'm going to create a second voice so you can see how they're stacked up together. Uh, I'm going to choose the second voice, which turns green. Here we go. And we're going to type in the middle C just for fun. The eighth notes, middle C. Let's go. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So as you can see, um, each of the quarter notes equals to two eighth notes. Okay. So what about then? Um, what about this guy here? This is a half note. A half note needs two quarter notes in order to make up for a half note time. So we could just go ahead and select this and just click on that and it turns into a half note. And as you can see, it occupies the musical space of four eighth notes. Okay, same is true. If you click on this one and then you click on the half note, it will turn into the value, the musical value, the musical space of four eighth notes, also known as two quarter notes. Okay, so keep going. Uh, and then next, we're going to make a comparison. We're so we're also going to. This is a bass clef, right here. Let's move down to the bass clef. The bass clef is also known as the F clef. F because this is a free hand, uh, written free hand symbol of the letter F. And these two dots, the line that is between these two dots here is called F. Okay, so this line right here is supposed to be F. Let's find out if it is. So let's find this F right here. Here we go. That's an F right there. So let's fill this bar with quarter notes again. Uh, we're going to now look at how um, whole note behave. So whole note needs two half notes and the four quarter note. In other words, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to create a second voice. So it's a different color. So I can layer it. Layer two, two voices um, on the same staff. And we're going to select this whole note and just click on a random note. So that's a F sharp. No worries. We'll, we'll uh, talk about what that is. Um, so an F sharp and then let's get out of it. So right now, well, this is kind of distracting, but uh, it's okay. Um, so you will see that this equals four of these quarter notes. It occupies this entire musical space. That is one bar. One what bar? One four four bar, which means there is four quarter notes in a bar. Four quarter, four quarter notes. And this note is a whole note. The value is four quarter notes, eight eighth notes, and two half notes. All of this, all of these notes in combination are the same musical space defined in 4-4. We haven't even defined how fast this is yet. Yeah, because it's not musical yet. It's not music yet until we say what's the what's the pace, right? It's like the heart rate. <laughs> you don't you don't you're not really alive until you have a pulse. And that pulse we haven't defined yet. So right now the pulse is zero. <laughs> so in theory, uh, we're just we're just playing with the theory right here. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to look at 16th notes. Okay, so let's borrow this note over here. I'm going to move this right here. So this note is, uh, what, a quarter note. A quarter note will need four of these 16th notes to make it up its value, right? So same thing. I'm going to use a second voice. And I'm going to type in any note, and that is... whatever okay so as you can see there are some ledger lines here well maybe you know you're like oh I don't like this note it's too far away well, and then move it up hmm? it's 
something like that. No, nope, just move it up. And these are note values that do not change if you move your notes. And then, so you can play all these notes and be able to hear them, you know? And then you can see this is a quarter note, which is equi it, it, it equals to four. 16th notes. Okay, I hope this is very clear. Um, if this still sounds a bit um, new to you, uh, that's to be expected. Uh, you know, all of us learn this multiple times with lots of repetitions. Repetitions, you know, we can fill 4-4 four, four bar with this. Lots of them. And as you can see, four quarter notes equals, this is eight, this is eight, so it's 16, 16, 16 notes. Okay, that's math. Now if we're gonna put math into uh, some motion, I guess, um, then we're gonna have to zoom out a little bit first we're gonna have to say, well, but how fast is this? And this is a big leap of faith. Because as soon as you define how fast this is, it turns into music. Uh, right now, this is not much of music because we're just doing math with notes value. So this is gonna sound very strange, <laughs> okay? Uh, but I will define this, and uh, you don't have to learn this just yet. So I will define this as quarter note. Where is my quarter note? As quarter note equals, let's say, 60. 60 beats per minute. Um, it's the average heart rate. Okay? And now the quarter note is defined at this pace, which is about this tempo, All right? So we're gonna play this. Let's hit to play. Mm -hmm. There you go. Stop playing. Uh, hit the space bar, it'll stop playing. Um, so. This is, this is how this will play. Of course, um, this is a machine, it's an application, so if you just hit um, play, it'll play at a default speed. And I don't really know what default speed is for Sibelius first. I mean Sibelius first right now. Um, and I defined it as 60 right now. So you can find out what your default speed is, it's probably 60. <laughs> my best guess okay all right uh so um i hope this reviews uh some of the stuff that we've discussed in our previous lectures and now we move on to relationships so i'm going to pick up this bar line and hit enter that will give us a fresh system okay so, uh, by the way, that's called a system break. A system break just, you know, it's like the typewriter. You just broom and ding, it moves up a little bit and let you type from a fresh um, left start. Okay, next, uh, we're going to just start with, uh, um, let's say, the middle C. All right, so here is a middle C and I'm gonna put it as quarter note. Here is a middle C. Here is a middle C. Oh, it's uh, it's like in a different voice. Let's correct that. Let's make that just one. Okay, and uh, select the quarter note and type in middle C. So this note, well, no, it's, it's just a note just as a middle C. Do we have names for them in uh, professional music schools? We call them do. Let me just write this. <laughs> um, this is do. 
and uh, so doll uh, doll is like uh, I'm doll, and what where does doll wants to go? Well, doll actually does not need to go anywhere, right? So the next note could easily just be another doll. Right? You, you're just sitting there, okay. And then what? It could also go up. So the next note could go... It might want to go up. And that would be a... Re, that would be a D. Okay? Uh, it could also want to go down. And in this case, we're going to come down here. Uh, same thing. Middle C. Um, and it could just want to go down, which means descend by one note. That would be a C or T in some solfege. So do T do C. They're all they're both correct. So okay, so we can move up the note. We can just keep it right there. It's called a unison, and then we can have it descend. But this is, look, this is just the next space on your system. And for now, that's all you need to worry about, is what is the next space? All scale learning begins with C major. Uh, not only because C major is an ubiquitous uh, key, a major key is a ubiqui ubiquitous key, and C major does not require any accidentals, so we can actually observe its behavior in all the space and lines of the staff um, and analyze it, and then we can get to the essence of what is the makeup of this family that begins with middle C. So we're about to find out all the members of this family, okay? So the next note is D, obviously. Uh, the, so we're gonna say this is Re, right? And so let's move it up one more. One more, so we can say the next one is, that's a me. Let's just say, type it in. That's a me. And the next one is a space. That's a fa. Yeah. Okay, now this is acting up for me. Ah, there we go. Fa, this is a fa, and we can keep going. Next one is on the line. It's a G, so it's also known as a soul. Next one is A440. That's it. That's A440. That's also La. Hmm? La. <clears throat> La. Okay, that's a, that's a A440. Hertz. Next one. As we know, after that is a C or T to Q. And then the next one, back to C. And we call it DO. Right? There we go. It's DO. Okay. So at this point, um, I'm going to make this nice and big for you. All right. This is our entire system now. Uh, we have eight, a total of eight notes. This suggests some kind of order. There is a first note, there is a last note. In a scale, the first and last note is always the same note but one octave higher or one octave lower scale 
is how we organize the pitches within an octave. An octave. I'm gonna type this word, the octave. Okay, the octave is where these letters. You see, this do do gets repeated here. And if you keep going, the re is gonna get repeated. Next one, mi is also gonna repeat right here. Fa. See, there's multiple, multiple uh, notes in different frequency, but they share the same name, right? This is do, re, mi, fa. So they share the same um, identification um, because they are one octave apart. And as we know from last lecture, the first partial is an octave. So that's the closest relationship in frequency, right? It's also the most obvious relationship in frequency that notes possess. The next one would be a fifth. The next one would be a third. The partial goes you know, the frequencies gets divided, da 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 da, and then becomes finer and finer. The smaller the vibrations become, the harder it is to capture them. So let's analyze this, right, between these two notes the C and the D. Um, I'm gonna, for your reference, I'm going to type this. So this is uh, C. D, E, F, G, A, D, and C again. Okay, so uh, let's analyze. Here is D, here is C, and here is D, and here is E, here is F, I'm just going to play it from here so you can see these keys line up. Eww. Wrong key. One more time. From here. So, la, ti, do. I'm a metal, so I don't have a high note. <laughs> but I'm gonna try. So please follow me and uh, let's just, um, if you don't feel comfortable doing the soft edge yet, no problem. Just say do do do, I'll do 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 first and then I'll do the soft edge. And uh, uh, please follow me and vocalize, really make sound out of your body so your body can vibrate in sync with my body, although you're watching this video, you can still sync with me in this frequency, okay? And as you can see, my voice is awful. So there's no such thing as your voice sounds awful when you're doing selfage. It's kind of like everybody expect that, okay? All right, so let's start from the first note. So this is do this is do 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 let's just let's just vocalize with with vocables let's just say do so find that note do do lock it in so this do 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 Can we go backwards? So this is do do do. This is four forty. Do 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 do. One more time. Now we're gonna do selfish. Ready? First note is Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do Going back. 
back. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Now, uh, we're gonna try to go a little bit ahead of the pitch to see if you can develop a little bit of feeling. And uh, at this point, you're welcome to pause this video and going back another minute or so and just practice with me. Okay, practice these pitches, embed these frequencies in your body. And I'm leading you to join me in synchronize your vibrations with mine. Um, you know, and please excuse my awful um, just composer voice. <laughs> I don't have any vocal training, so this is this is really just me. Just uh. <laughs> um, so let's do this uh, one more time. Um, so pause the video now. Do this one more time with me doing the um, do re mi fa so la ti do do ti la so fa mi re do with me doing this. Next, uh, we're actually going to. You can unpause your video now. Next, we're going to go a little bit ahead of the playing of the software. Okay, so we're going to lead the software. We're going to find the next note ourselves. Let's see if you have that feeling. And if not, just means you have to repeat a little bit more of what we're doing before. All right, one more time. So this is, let's find the first pitch and then let's just go off. Let's check every time we move to the next note. This is C major scale ascending, ascending. So first note is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Going back down. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. So it's a matter of repetition, just like any. Um, skill the more you go through these the faster the more likely you're gonna start to develop intuition about this feeling the feeling of the c major scale okay you're also welcome to do this with me in the letters you can also uh, i i would suggest doing the self edge first Okay, soft edge is when I pronounced these letters up here. And the letter names are reflected right underneath. So we can also do this, and I'll do this quickly. So uh, you are welcome to follow me as well. So this is C, D, E, F, G, A, B. C, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Okay, um, and already um, the descending scale already presented itself to you. I'm not sure if you noticed we've been doing it. <laughs> We're going backwards here, but it's actually very very obvious it's right here and we're gonna do the descending scale in the bass clef okay um it's okay to feel a little bit overwhelmed because we're in a new clef but keep in mind there is nothing that this note can behave that is out of the expectation of line space line space line space all the scales, all the scales you're ever going to learn, 
okay, is a matter of moving from line to space, space to line, line to space, space to line. It has to go in this exact order. Line, space, line, space, line, space, line, space, line. This is very important. Especially in your midterm and final exams, you will be required to spell major scales in other keys. And we'll get into it in a little bit. So first thing first, let's do the descending. And I hope it sounds familiar to you. Uh, it will be out of my vocal range, uh, but you know, worst comes to worst. If I can't sing, I'll just play it on the piano and then you can hear it. So uh, here we go. This is Do. So it's Do, C, La. Oh, let me write this. Uh, La. So, fa, mi, re, do. <laughs> oh God. Okay, actually, it's not bad. For some reason, my voice like shifted lower as I'm getting older. Oh, that kind of scares me. Ugh. Okay. Uh. So here we go, and you can do the same thing. Uh, if you're so diligent, I'm sure all of you are. So this would be do eh, do C si, la so fa And this is do, but one octave down. Okay. And the note names are exactly uh, the reverse from the above. Here we go. I'll type it in for you. This is C, B, uh, eh? Pardon me. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Yeah, okay. Um, God, this playback line is so uh, annoying. How do you turn it off in Sibelius first? Eh, whatever. Um, playback line. Appearance. Layout. Home. Playback line. Where's playback line? Playback. Line. Oh. I don't think you guys have an option to turn it off. That is so weird. Okay, uh, good for me to know. <laughs> this line is where the the play the the playback is gonna start, and for some reason, uh, maybe this no, and for some reason, Sibelius first won't let you uh. <laughs> turn it off. Um, well, that's frustrating. Well, anyway, I'm sorry this is here, but um, it's not great for teaching um, demonstration, but I think it'll, good, it'll be good for you to kind of know if you press space bar, I guess. This is going to play right here. Yep, and and it's almost like uh, this is um, 60. I think this is 60. That's the default. Oh, that's because I set it as 60. That sounds like 60 to me. 
60, meaning uh, 60 beats per minute. Okay, so now we have all of these notes and uh, we're gonna find out what they're about, what their relationships are. Okay, this is a major scale, C major scale. By the way, uh, we're going to label this. I'm gonna type it in for you. This is the C major scale ascending. This would be C major scale descending, right? Okay, so let's find out their relationship. As you can see, let's move your attention to the keyboard here, okay? Here's an octave. Let's count. There's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven notes. This one doesn't count because it starts the next cycle of octaves. Okay, so what happens here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve! On the keyboard there are twelve notes in octave. You're back to C, the cycle starts again. One, two, three, four, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You keep going. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 notes in an octave. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's begin, first of all, to investigate what would give the C major scale, it's character. C major, it's because this note and the third scale degree, we call it the scale degree. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is eight, also is one, right? Because it starts the next cycle of the octave. Huh, but what makes it major it would be the relationship between this note and this note. One and the three. That's a major third interval. Okay, the, we're still way ahead of ourselves. But right now, I bet if you have never practiced a major scale, you just kind of know when you heard a major scale. Right? I'm going to demonstrate. Here's the feel of a major scale, C major scale. Okay, ready? There you go, you have your C major scale. This is C major scale. Everything is on the white key, right? So if we were to go ahead ourselves even more, what would make it not a C major anymore is to change any of these notes in the white key. Okay? For example, in the theme and variation by Mozart of uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, it was just called a C major variation, theme and variation. Uh, later in the piece, instead of... Mm, instead of that, uh, we're actually hearing something like this. We're hearing this. And instead of, we're changing a note. Two notes. Mm -hmm. 
versus C major. So that will be the difference. This is how we tune into the feeling of major scale, minor scale, and there's uh, two uh, and th two or three kinds of minor scale. Minor scales are very expressive. Uh, no, they're not sadder. They're just more expressive. Please get that word out of your head. Um, uh, and uh, more expressive. Uh, in in the hands of master composers, <laughs> in the hands of uh, you know mediocre composers, it doesn't matter what key, and <laughs> they're they're just boring music, right? <laughs> uh, and so, um, let's go back to our C major scale. So you can see that every time I strike a key here, you'll see a corresponding key on the screen on the keyboard. Okay. So I'm gonna turn this camera around so you can see when I play. You see, you see the, the key is being played. Okay, so let's find the middle C. Here's middle C and the next note is D. You see there's a note in between this one. We're skipping that. So the closest relationship to C is this black key called C sharp. Sharp meaning it's uh, just a semitone, just a half step up, you know? It's also known as a D flat because it is just about a half step, half step lower than the D. So here's the first big definition uh, of our lesson today. The relationship between C and the D because they skip a note in the middle, okay? This is not the smallest step on the keyboard, is it? No, it's not. Okay, so, and we call this, I'm gonna put this in the perspective for you. So, between these notes, we call it a whole step. A whole, uh, hello. Whole step. Here we go. This is a whole step. I'm abbreviated as whole step. Okay. So whole step, and the next one from D to E. Ah, oh, it skipped another uh, black key, which tells us it is another whole step. So we're gonna write it as another whole step. Yeah, we're really getting down to the, the, the micro relationships between the notes, right? Okay, next between E and F. Oh, hello, E and F is right next to each other. Which means they are called a half step. Half step, I'm just gonna call it H. So this is a half step. In some textbooks, um, this is called a semitone. The half step is called a semitone. This is called a whole tone. Just tone, uh, semi tone. Uh, but I like um, whole step and half step better, right? So. Moving on from F to G. Take a look. Eh? What do you see here? F and G. Ah, oh, we're skipping. We're skipping the F sharp. Also known as G flat. So what it is, is another whole step. Keep going. And from G to A, same thing. We got G to A, we're not, we're not doing this one. We're skipping it. Another whole step. And this one. Oh, why do you do that? 
<gasps> Why do you do that? Oh, so buggy. All right. Uh, so between these two notes, between these two notes, let's see. That's A and that's a B. We also skipped a note, so it's another whole step. All right, this is making me very unhappy. I'm going to use this guy. Yeah, it's doing it because it thinks this one flipped. So it needs to land on the head of the B. <laughs> um, okay, making this nice and neat for you guys. Eh? Last one, last one from B to the next cycle, beginning of next cycle. Take a look at this. B, C. There's nothing in between. They're right next to each other, which means they are a half step. Yeah. They are a half step. Half. Okay, so we have um, an entire scale, the DNA of a C major, major scale. This is the formula. This is the um, DNA makeup for all major scales. I want to make it. I want to make sure that uh, uh, you understand this. All major scales. All. Oh, well, this is awful. Oh, I want to see this. Yeah. Okay. So. All. I'm gonna create a box text so it's more obvious. All major scales follow this formula. What's the formula? Ho, ho, half. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I should be specific. All major skills. Ascending. All right. So this is pretty much it. This is all you have to know for major scale spelling. It's going to take you into all kinds of fun territory. For this week, you're going to practice this major scale, but... In the practice video, you're going to expand this into another key, which I will quickly demonstrate because it really is very obvious. Uh, once you can read this keyboard here with all the odd combination of the white key here, the black key here, okay? So instead of starting on the, um, on the C, Let's move it, let's say, let's go and start on the note F, just for fun, okay? So, we go to select the bar, and then we say quarter notes, and we're gonna go to the keyboard, and we go like, here's the first note, first scale degree, it's an F. We are gonna create a F major scale in quarter notes, ascending. The formula is, let's take a look. Let's bring the formula down here. I'll make this slightly smaller. So first, starting on F, we're gonna go to a whole step, which is G. Next is whole step, that's A. Next is a half step. So it can't be this white key because the closest, the half step is this black key here. So you do exactly that, you just click 
this black key. Um, and then it spells as a B flat, and which is correct. It's a B, and it's flat. It's a half step lower, so it's flat, right? If it's a half step higher, then it's a sharp. Sharp looks like the hashtag symbol. Okay. Next is a whole step. So we got this B flat here. Whole step meaning this one, right? It's right. It's it's not right next to each other, but it just skips one note. That's correct. And then next is another whole step. That's next one is another whole step. And the next one is the final note, which begins the next cycle of F major scale, which is the F. So that is a half step. Look, from E to F is a half step. It's right there. So this, my friend, is a F major scale. Ah, oh, then ding. That's it. We can even get fancier. It's just pick a random note, okay? Um, and uh, we're gonna do quarter note again. Eh, let's change it to like uh, eighth notes and uh, totally random. I'm gonna actually close my eyes. I'm gonna put my mouse like randomly. And I'm gonna choose a random note on the keyboard. Oh, that's a G, okay. So that's a G, so that means we're going to spell G major scale, ascending, okay? So G, keep going, whole step. So remember, it's whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So whole is A, you skip a note. Whole is B, skip a note. Half, half is the note right next to the B, don't skip. Just right next to the B. Neighbor, neighbor, close neighbor. Yeah. And next one is a whole step, whole step, whole. And whole step again. This time you cannot click this one because this is the neighbor. This is a half step, which means you have to skip this and go to the next one. It's a black key. Oh, that's F sharp. You see what I mean? This is F and you got to go half step higher. That's a sharp. It looks like a hashtag. Okay, sharp, F sharp. And the next one is another G because uh, it's one octave higher. There you go. Here is a G major scale. Ah, sen, D. So what's the significance of any of this? Um, now that's uh, two semesters of uh, courses right there. And the best way to learn this, the feeling of all these different keys is to learn it in the repertoire. Okay. And when we meet next week in person, not in person, uh, synchronously, um, I will introduce some of the repertoires that you can explore these major so-called major scales in these key. But the quickest demonstration I can show you is if I were to play the same piece that is written in C major, I can transpose it to another key and it will sound pretty much the same, pretty much the same on a modern piano. Okay, so same piece from earlier. We just did F major, yes. And play it in F major. So instead of this is C, I'm gonna play it in F major. Now I'm gonna play it in G major.
like that, we can also transpose it to any key you want. How about F sharp major? <laughs> it's all like on the dark key. So uh, almost all of them, right? So there are a total of 12 keys, as you can imagine. There are a total of 12 notes uh, within an octave. So in theory, uh, any of the pieces in the tonal music repertoire, this is, by the way, a very, very defined and sh brief period in music history, is the common practice music, the tonal music. Um, they're based on this particular tuning where uh, when you transpose to another key, the music more or less sounds the same. Okay, In the uh, pre-tonal, before this tuning became uh, standard and um, uh, standardized and became uh, kind of, you know, what uh, most music making cultures in the West agree on. Uh, before all of that, there were other kind of tuning because people don't necessarily agree how to divide an octave into 12 equal parts, more or less equal. There is no theoretical equal. Some notes have to be sacrificed uh, because of a, a, a acoustic property. There's, you know, some some frequencies they beat better with each other. Um, so if uh, you talk to any um, piano tuner who are any good, and they'll tell you whether they tune the your piano because the the division e twelve division in an octave is never going to be equal. If it's theoretically equal, mathematically equal, it's gonna sound awful. Your ear is not gonna like it. So most piano tuners will ask you, do you want me to tune to the fifth, the fourth, fifth, or the third and sixth? So in other words, um, this interval, these intervals will sound very, very harmonious. The beating the beats in the frequencies will be super super in sync but then this one and this one might not be might not be depending on the piano right or the piano tuner might tune it to the sixth and the, the the third which means these will sound super super good but then these might not and then when when you actually go to top you see down here, this is the electronic piano. Up here, because it's tuned to, I guess, this is tuned to third and th sixth. So up here, it's actually a little bit out of tune. The beating don't really sync up here. This is a perfect fifth. And, and it's very weird. It's like down here, down here, it's, um, it doesn't sound very good, the close intervals. Six, they don't sound very well. They, they, they just don't sound the, the same way. They don't have the same acoustic property on an, uh, a real piano. Um, so a real piano, again, is a, is a living instrument. It's alive. So it's always moving and its acoustic properties are changing according to the, 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 the humidity in the air, the temperature, the pianist's mood. <laughs> Okay, all right, um, this is it, and uh, uh, please watch the homework video, Learning Major Scales in Sibelius First, and um, I will see you all next week, and have a great week with Major Scales. <laughs>